Not too long ago, I talked about the camera behind Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, and with all the changes from season to season, it got me thinking about how production went for each series. There are so many differences with each season, and you only notice and learn more as you grow older. Welcome to a new series on the channel, where we explore the production and development side of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, starting right from the beginning with Series 1. The current show, we all know and love, could have been a much different adaptation of the Reverend W. Audrey's Railway Series books. By 1978, there had already been a failed BBC special that showcased the episode The Sad Story of Henry, which resulted in a disastrous outcome due to being filmed live, and Audrey refused to trust the BBC ever again. There was also a planned Andrew Lloyd Webber musical series about these talking trains, but nothing other than a pilot was created. It wasn't until 1979, when Britt Oldcroft was filming a documentary about steam engines in the UK, that she met the Reverend Audrey. She grew fascinated with the books and their characters, and strived to gain TV rights through Audrey's publishers. What first attracted me to the stories uh, were and still are the characters, uh, the adventures, the situations they get into, and this is what made me want to bring them to life on the screen uh, with all the things that uh, a multi-dimensional world can, can do. It was then that Britt and her husband formed the Britt Olcroft Company. It then took a couple of years before Britt Olcroft did anything else. During this time, she remortgaged her house and saved money to be able to produce her adaptation of the Railway series. Britt Oldcroft did need a pilot film to sell the show to channels in the UK. She needed a director to help bring her vision to life, and after seeing a yoga advert directed by David Mitten, she decided to meet with him. Britt mentioned the creation of a pilot to David, and they both agreed live-action models would be the way forward, creating a partnership between her company and David Mitten's company, Clearwater Features. Somewhere down the line here, it was decided the show would be named Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. After ITV showed interest in Brit's production, it was soon realised very quickly that this was becoming a reality, and concept art was created by Robert Gold Gullias. A script was written to meet the five minute time slot, and a list of characters and scales was also made so the model crew knew what to make for the pilot. Gage 1 models of Thomas and Gordon were made especially for this pilot. <laughs> The episode filmed for the pilot was Down the Mine, and it was stressed by Britt Oldcroft and David Mitten that this would be a lower quality version of the show. The pilot went into production in March 1983, and took three weeks to film. It was filmed at Clearwater's Battersea Studio on 35mm film. Not too much is known about the pilot currently. We are able to view the script, and there are some behind the scenes photos, but this is the only piece of footage that exists from it. What we do know is that the crew found it a good learning base for the rest of the show. It is also unknown as to who narrated and composed the music for it. The pilot was finally test screened in April 1983 with a positive response and the series was greenlit by ITV. The next stages were to complete all major models in June whilst the rest of the crew worked on storyboards and cross plotting. Finalisation on scripts needed to be sorted by this stage too, so that a narrator could come in to record. Ringo Starr was chosen to be the narrator for all 26 episodes. Did it take you ages to actually record it, or was it one of those things you just no, dashed it took, in? No, uh, it took about eight days. We, we used to do about four or five a day, and then we had to redo four of them, because uh, the tone of your voice in the morning to, you know, when you've got rolling, <laughs> changes. I know, just what you mean. Hello, kiddies, it's old and rich here. <laughs> and uh, so we did four again, so it took about eight days. It was originally believed Ringo recorded the pilot too, but this has since been denied by crew members and wouldn't have made much sense for production. It took Ringo just over a week to record all his narration for the show, including retakes. And she, I'd never read the books as a child. I was probably one of the few children who was deprived of them. <laughs> and uh, I'm more of a Beano man. And uh, <laughs> I read the books and I thought they were fabulous. You know, I thought they were really good books. And also the, the drawings in the book, the style of them I loved. And 
she uh, convinced me that you know they were going to be animated in that style. You know, they weren't going to make them cheap looking. So I thought it'd be a nice thing for me to do, really. Mm -hmm. And are you uh, pleased with the end product? I'm real pleased with the end product. At the same time, the recently chosen composers Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell were recording the music for the show. It is believed that during this time, Ringo Starr walked into the two recording and ended up playing the bell for Toby's theme. I always find it interesting that this was done in pre-production, as narration without lip sync and especially music would usually be done in post-production to match up with the edits of episodes. In August 1983, the final scripts with correct notes for visuals were finalised. A general production meeting was held at this time, final checks were put into place, and finally, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends was ready to begin production. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends went into production in September 1983, with a total of 26 episodes needed to be filmed. Setup days and film tests were done before the crucial day of the 12th of September, being the first date to begin filming. All episodes were based around the stories from the Railway series, with the exception of one, Thomas's Christmas Party. Due to the agreement for the show at the time, all stories had to be based on a book, so Audrey had to rush out a story to match this new Christmas-themed episode. New models were made for Thomas and Gordon, along with models created for the rest of the cast. It was decided the show would remain in the same scale as the pilot. It is believed the budget to make and film all 26 episodes cost somewhere around £500,000, which with today's inflation is about £1.5 million. During filming, an Apple Macintosh computer was present, and a log was made so the crew knew which shots had been filmed for each set. This was then saved onto a floppy disk. It is believed production didn't overshoot due to wrapping in March 1984, which is what Britt Olcroft had originally planned for, a whole year after production began on the pilot. Post-production was quite unique for the show, that being editing began whilst the series was still in production. This was most likely sourcing the right takes from the rushes so they would be ready to be compiled together when production wrapped. All episodes had to be completed by June 1984, which was quite a tight timescale. During this time, pickup shots were filmed and some sound effects were specially recorded for the series, with a trip to the Tallyflin Railway taking place. It is believed that these sound effects were only used in the first series. To help promote the show, Ringo Starr's name and face was plastered in all types of media. Being an ex-Beatle, having him involved with the show was a great selling point. Once the episodes were all complete, Britt could only sit and wait to see if her production was a success. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends premiered on the 9th of October 1984, with Wilbur Audrey and Ringo Starr appearing on breakfast television for ITV to help promote it. And uh, of course we have the Reverend Audrey with us as well, um, who's the creator of this new Thomas the Tank Engine series, which, when does it actually go out, Ringo? It goes out at 12 this afternoon, I hope all your mums and get your kids around the telly and watch it. And you're doing, you're doing the narration for it. it? I do the narration and the Reverend wrote it. Wonderful. And Clearwater made it all visible. What do you make of him? Do you think he's done a good job? Well, I think Gringo's done an excellent job. Well, your words and my mouth will go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the first series of the show aired between October 1984 to January 1985, with great success. The show was doing so well it got regular reruns. Voiced by Ringo Starr, the TV series premiered in 1984, featuring model trains with human-like expressions. It proved a hit with adults and children alike. I think it's because the engines experience all the same kind of emotions, happiness, sadness, disappointment, um, making up with friends and so on, that little children experience in the own lives when they're growing up. It was very clear that the series was here to stay and plans for a second series began development. But I wouldn't want to spoil it for you, as that's another story. Thank you so much for watching this video. I worked really hard on this one and tried to make it as accurate as possible. Below, I've included a link to a Google Drive uploaded by Olfsted Estate on Twitter that includes the production packet for series one. This video wouldn't have been possible without that. 
Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, or even a comment. It really does help the channel. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I shall see you in the next one.